Hi, 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 and welcome back to Let's Play Higurashi. When we last left off, we found out a little more about that murder that happened back at the dam, the lynching and dismemberment, and then we played zombie tag. <laughs> His game is sold all over the place. I was told that it was super freaking disturbing, but I'm having a really hard time imagining it being so when we're like playing old maid and zombie tag all the time. <laughs> After arriving home, I quickly made preparations to head out once again. I had agreed to meet Reyna to dig Colonel Sanders out of the mountain of treasure from before. Hey mom, do we have work gloves? I need towels too. Aren't they in the shed out back? The towels are by the sink. Alright, now I was ready. Looking at me, my mom stared quizzically. What is going on, Keiichi? Where are you headed to with that getup? If they come to dump illegally, he'll be buried completely and impossible to dig him out. And if that happens... Well, Reyna will undoubtedly go after the Colonel Sanders in front of the fried chicken place in town. Uh, just a bit of excavating so my classmate doesn't become a criminal. Oh, well, don't be out too late. <laughs> Mom returned to the kitchen with a puzzled expression still on her face. Cutting through the woods is a shortcut to the dam site. I ran into someone. Oh, it's you. I cannot remember what your voice was at all. <laughs> It was Toitake-san, probably taking pictures of wild birds again with that precious camera of his. I couldn't... It couldn't be that he took pictures of was handsome young men in the twilight. Hey, long time no see. Keichi-kun, right? Might do regards. I expelled the rude imagery from my head and greeted him without inciting anything. By the way, was that girl an acquaintance of yours? He was probably talking about Reina. Guessing by the way Tomitaki-san was shaken up. What was that all about? She was walking around with an axe. And she was laughing with a huge smile across her face. Yeah, that was Reina without a doubt. It was probably because she could take it home today, so she couldn't hide her excitement. I hid myself because I thought it might be dangerous. Should I call the cops to be safe? Well, it would probably be quite a spectacle, a girl her age roaming around with an axe. And his reaction was the epitome of logical. But it's fine, it's fine, just leave her be. She's just wandering around looking for more victims. He was alarmed by my crass response. Well, it's probably hard for normal people to understand, Reyna. I'll just toss a bunch of BS out there. If you were the one to be killed out there, she'd probably be the one to do it. Try not to snoop too much around here. With a condescending smirk, I started off in the direction of the dam site. Before I got too far, he abruptly called out to me. Keichikun, is that meant to be a warning for an outsider like me? I didn't mean it seriously. I did try to make it obvious, but... <laughs> I'll try my best to be careful. Leaving only those words behind, he turned around and left. I didn't really mean to call him an outsider. I wasn't really implying anything when I said that. I only meant it as a joke, but it felt like I'd said something bad. And through the watercolor scenes. <laughs> Yay, trash piles. Keiichi kun, I was waiting for you. Let's try your best today. I understood what Tomataki-san was trying to say. Somebody gallivanting about while waving an axe around would seem dangerous. You should cover the axe with something when you have it in public. It's not good to carry it around in the open like that. Uh, it seems that I lost it, so there isn't a cover. Thinking about it, there really was no need to try to keep up appearances. Everyone in Hinimazawa probably already knew about Rana's eccentricities. She's probably the only person who could carry an axe around and not be considered suspicious. Well, let's finish this today. If we bust this last beam, we should be able to pull him out. I've got everything I need, so leave it to me. Okay. I took the axe and made my way up the slope. Just wait, Colonel Sanders. Keiichi Kun will save you. Alright, get back. I'll finish this in one go. 13 hours later. <laughs> a solid thwack rain out as if the job was being done by a lumberjack. How is it? Think you can do it? If it looks too hard, you don't have to strain yourself. If I can break through this, I think we'll be good. 
I have plenty of power today. I can do it. But the adversary is more formidable than I expected. First of all, I'd never use an axe before. <laughs> During a school camping trip, I wanted to split wood, but I lost it, paper, rock, scissors, and wasn't allowed to do it. Because the spot where I was standing was so unstable, I soon became tired and I decided to take a break. Raina had already spread out a tarp and laid down some tea and sweets. I, I'm fine. I'm almost there. I'll, I'll just make sure that you can give uh, Colonel Sanders a good night kiss tonight. Yeah. Um, thanks. Giving Colonel Sanders a good night kiss. Huh? Come to think of it, you're a transfer student too, right? Where'd you live before? I asked her nonchalantly while drinking tea. I thought she'd lived here her entire life. Hmm? Uh, in Kanto. It wasn't as rural as it is out here, but it's still out in the countryside. Why'd you move here? To Hinamazawa, I mean. You know, this is pretty far out in the boonies. Why'd you move here? Does it have to do with your dad's work? Dad said he wanted to move out to a studio. He had been saying for a while that somewhere deep in the mountains like this would be perfect. Studio? Is your dad an artist or something? He paints scenery. Seems that twice a year he opens a gallery for the stuff he does. When he started, his works were displayed in an industrial plaza in Tokyo, but now they're in exhibit in the Makuhari Mess. He's determined to have them displayed in the Waterfront International Exhibition Hall. That's amazing! Let me see them next time. I was too embarrassed to tell her that I didn't really know what kind of pictures my father painted. Well, eventually I would. I picked myself up while giving some vague answers. But you transferred in the middle of the semester, didn't you? Wasn't that a hassle? Not really. I was getting bored of the city anyways. I was trying to get answers from her, but I ended up getting being the one giving out all the answers. With a bit of a smile, a wry smile on my face, I grabbed the handle of the axe and headed back to the work site. Let me guess, the Higurashi cooled the air? <laughs> the air grew colder as the sun slowly set. The Higurashi began their song as if to tell me to stop and head home for the day. But just a bit more. Today, I would end it. When I first started, I chatted with Reina as I worked, but now I didn't have that luxury. <laughs> you little... Damn it! I swung the axe countless times today, just like this. Contact, shards of wood splintering. The assailant butchered the victim's body with hatchets and pig's axes. I recall that passage from the tabloid. One hit with something like this would smash someone's head in. Axes and pig axes are not meant to be swung at people, ever. Thank you for that public announcement. <laughs> With one last swing, the beam cracked apart. The weight I put behind the axe only split through it, but smashed the statue's shoulder as well. Ah, the arm came off with a sickening sound. It clattered down noisily, stopping at my feet. Oh. Well, what's the matter? Are you hurt? I'm sorry. The figure's arm, I broke it. Oh, that's all? I thought Keiichi couldn't hurt himself. I probably had a really guilty look on my face. Serena said that without a hint of dismay as she smiled. We just need to tape it back on and put a coat over it. No one will even notice. I see. Well, let's pull him out then. Can you get that side? Okay. Seems they haven't been able to find one of the arms, you see. I laughed dryly at how pathetic I was for considering the arm flopping down and rolling to my feet to be such a bad omen. Both Reina and Mion knew how sickening that incident was, so they pretended they didn't know. I had looked it up all by myself. And shamefully enough, I was scared. You're pathetic, Keiichi Mebra. Alright, Reina, let's do this in one go. Ready? And... Wait, he said that out loud? Oh! We did it! We did it, keiichi -kun. Yay! The right time to give three cheers. That moment of two days of work bearing fruit. He who was brought to Hinimizawa covered in filth to meet his end. Instead, we were able to welcome him back. You're pretty lucky, Colonel Sanders. Your new master is a pretty decent person. Or completely crazy and probably going to try and kill us with an axe by the end of this. Ah, he's really cute. 
It didn't matter that he was dirty. Raina nuzzled him cheerfully with her cheek. I was dead tired, but seeing her happy face made it all worth it. I'll help you carry it back. It'd be bad if it gets dark. Yeah, right. I really want to thank you, Cagey Cly. I won't forget this. Think real hard about what you'll do to repay me, okay? Uh, I wonder what kind of repayment. I wonder. For now, I'll just hold back my evil cackle. We were ready to take it to her house, but we couldn't go like this. We rolled the statue up in the tarp and lifted it. So Jack and Jill went down the hill carrying a human-sized bag and an unsheathed axe. <laughs> I prayed that he wouldn't run into Tomitake-san. If he saw us here and took a picture, we'd need to get rid of him. <laughs> Is that meant to be a warning for an outsider like me? Something struck me as odd about the words. Unable to grasp my sense of humor that he had left behind. <laughs> Alright. Taking us six episodes, but we got the damn statue out of the fucking thing. <laughs> you know, I am curious what the point is of having a tip section when there is absolutely no choices. <laughs> what do you need the tips for? Huh? <laughs> How was it, Kate, Jen? So you went to Reina san's house. Wasn't it amazing? Uh, it's nothing like that, right? Right? Unlike my house, her residence wasn't newly constructed. It had been renovated from a pre-existing building. While the house itself was fine, the problem was the yard. There was crammed with rows upon rows of oddities. I bet her mom loves the fact that Reina has a hoarding problem. They were all the same as Colonel Sanders, stuff you'd see while walking around town. Like a cake shop's mascot, Little Luck, Little Licky, <laughs> sorry, and told but Toad Dalamon in front of the pharmacy. She even had the amazing flying elephant from the top of the department store. I'll agree with you that those are cute. But why the mailbox? Won't you get in trouble for that one? But so cute! She must have just thought about it because her face filled with delight. So it's the bigger the better. Just as long as it's big. <laughs> In her room displays the smaller ones. I had a chance to see them before. And cute kids like Rika Chan are locked away in the basement. <laughs> yep. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was me supposed to. And cute kids like Rika Chan are locked away in the basement. Yep. Yep. I'll keep anything. So cute. So she takes anything that she likes back to her nest. No ill will is intended. Hey, Reina. You know about the Statue of Liberty in New York, right? Is that cute? Oh yeah, cute! I want it! The US should probably come up with some countermeasures ASAP. If not, the Statue of Liberty will really take a trip to Hinamizawa in the not so distant future. My apologies for keeping you waiting. Rika Chan had returned. It's no fun being called to the staff room. Did you do something? Rude. Rika isn't a hoodlum like Keiichi-san. <laughs> Nothing like that, Keiichi-kun. Rika-chan is a member of the festival festival committee. Festival? The school cultural festival or something? Keiichi-chan, Keiichi-chan. I already told you. It's the village festival. The Watanagashi? Oh yeah, she did say that there'd be a festival at the shrine sometime during the break. So what is this thing about? Is it like a floating lantern festival? I guess the last part where you set things adrift in the river is similar. Except we use cotton things like old worn out futons and padded cloaks. It's a festival expressing thanks for their years of service. It sounds like a very good way to... litter. <laughs> The people living in Hinimizawa dump their futons and padded cloaks into a stream? 
It sounded like it'd be a lot of trouble if it backed up the current. Maybe they should just drop some fish in and have a fish wrangling competition. Skewer them, sprinkle a little salt- Oh man, I could smell it already. That's just summer camp. I never anticipated how destitute Keiichi san's imaginative capabilities would actually be. How could you tell? I was thinking something silly. It was written all over your face. What sort of face could have expressed what I imagined just now? Reina demonstrated it for me. I see. No argument there. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing fun like that, you see. But you should still look forward to it. Let's all go together. I'll come get you that day. I don't really feel like going to festivals unless someone asks me. I wouldn't get bored if these guys were going, though. You won't get bored! We're doing it again this year! Mion's proclamation came as she looked at each member in turn. What was this all about? From the way Mion looked, it was probably a competition. Our club's summer tradition! The Watanagashi Four Demon Firefight! Except now there's five demons. That sounds awful. What kind of name is that? I think it's a cute name, though. I tried to object sharply, but since Reina looked so happy about it, I decided it was pointless to fight it. Since Keiichi is here this year, it becomes five demons. Rika-chan made a small correction in light of my presence. So, how does this funky sounding club activity tie into the festival? Oh, this is where you exhibit the skills you nurtured through your daily club activities. Exactly. We should show the full extent of our abilities that the best of the best have obtained through our daily trials and tribulations. Last year the mayor got angry, so we need to make sure not to cause any problems this time. So basically, we're doing club activities while checking out the stalls. Rika-chan really is the only one who explains things so they make sense. <laughs> I see, so we'll be exhibiting on those busy festival grounds. Reina was right, of course. That would be a reason for the mayor to get angry. <laughs> but it's lots of fun. That was the only point that I did not doubt. It would be, without question, fun. The day of the festival was drawing near. Time skip? Nope. Well, putting that aside for now, let's start our club activities today. Any objections? Nay! Our voices rang out, rang out in unison. When there's lots of people, card games are really the easiest to play. This really is the ba most basic of table games. <sighs> Playing with the marked deck again? We'll use a new one today. There are no marks on the cards, so we're all on equal footing. I wonder if that really is the case. I'll have to inspect them. Well, that was fair. Just to be safe, everyone check the cards. Yes, these seem to be fine. You satisfied? Then today, I guess, we'll play... President. That's good for five people. I don't know how to play President. Another standard card game for everybody except me, apparently. <laughs> First one to get rid of all their cards wins. The basic rules play a better card than the one before it. Oh, you can play straights in Paris. There are various techniques that improve the game, like reversals. But because it's such a well-known game, there are a lot of house rules for it as well. The name, for example, in my hometown, we called it Millionaire. I'd like to go over some details. Are the Jokers wild? Can you make a reversal with three threes? My god, this sounds complicated. No Jokers. Two is the highest. You can reverse a reversal. You can only make a reversal with a four of a kind, not three. Also, you know how the peasant sends a good card to the president? None of that. While I was confirming the familiar rules, Satoka looked over at me cautiously. I probably should have tried to look like more of an amateur. I was pretty used to this game. It's president, and it's with a new deck. Today, I might be able to win. I had the gist of the rules now, but that wasn't everything, was it? So what shall today's penalty be? About that, why don't we all write down something on slips of papers and have the losers draw one? Well, that seemed like it could be interesting. I'll write a nasty one and have Keiichi san draw it. It would be awful if you wrote a bad one and drew it yourself. Just don't lose. Don't you know best? 
Mion handed out several slips of paper to everybody. Then write down whatever and put it in this bag. When you lose, stick your hand inside and pick one out. Now then, what would be a good penalty? Worst case scenario, you draw what you wrote. Something too intense would be like digging your own grave. No penalty. Let's forbid that kind of idea from being written down. Ricky Chan's casual suggestion had caused Mion's hand to lurch to a sudden halt. <laughs> That's so sneaky, Mion san. She wrote no penalty on the corner of the slip. Is folded. <laughs> I see. Just in case you lost, you grabbed the note with the folded corner and you'd be safe. That was a good idea. Diabolical as ever, Mion. Rika Chan is quite formidable, too, being able to see through that. I couldn't understand her even though she didn't stand out. Everyone, don't write penalties that are too mean, okay? Nobody agreed to her proposal. Everyone was ruthless. It's fine, Rina, just don't lose. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I'll try so hard. I'll try hard so everyone has to pick the penalty I write. Rina was quite brutal even though she usually appeared meek. Better not underestimate her either. I agree with that. I'm very curious what Reyna's penalty is in particular. Everybody's penalties are scary. I still didn't know what Rika Chan's penalties would be like. Basically, he can't afford to lose this game. Everybody here ready? We all nodded. Having confirmed that, Mion dealt out the cards. Finally, the battle begins. I had a decent starting hand. Card after card was played in the middle. Not needing Mion to tell them, both Rika-chan and Sotoku played their cards without hesitation. Rina and I were the only ones to pause the thing. It seemed that Rina genuinely couldn't make up her mind, but I was different. I was like sharks, stalking its prey, just waiting for the right time to strike. Huh? Will this work? Then I'll play this three, and I'm out! Nine! Nobody? Eight? Seven? I'm out! Five? And five? I'm out! Then I'll discard this last one and I'm out! Bah! I missed my chance! The loser of the first round was of all people, Mion, and now I was certain. Today, I could win. Now, now then, Mecham pulled out one of the slips, okay? Mion, accepting her defeat, scrounged around inside the bag and pulled out a piece of paper. What? Who did this? Who wrote this? Mion quivered and shrieked. Um, what is it? Huh? Raina was also surprised when she peeked at it. What kind of terrible thing was written on it? Pet the principal on the head. That sounds like Rika. <laughs> hey, wait. How is this bad? <laughs> Gage, son. Do you not understand? The principal is balding and ashamed of it. Sotoko yelled with a serious look on her face, but she wasn't as loud as Mion's. Eh, but she wasn't as loud as Mion's shriek. What could it be? The principal is a martial arts master. He boasts about traveling around the world, perfecting his skills when he was younger. He switched to teaching after seeing the poor state of education in Japan after the war. He was inhuman. Pet that guy's head? <laughs> How's the club president? There's no way I can set a bad example by refusing. <sighs> she bellowed out a yell as she dashed off down the hallway. Wouldn't it have been easier to sneak out quietly and try and do it without making a fuss? Probably impossible. They say he used to hunt sea slugs by sensing their presence. I could do nothing but wait with bated breath. Kapow! A rumble shook the classroom. That's the principal's aerial opener. Boom! Pow! Zap! Zinka! Boom! Sorry. <laughs> Following the launcher with a jab, jab, strong, fierce combo. He's even using a meter. C -c combo break. From how it sounded, the principal's jumping fierce sounds like it's a multi-hit combo. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Nothing I could do now except stay calm. 
I understood now why there were no delinquents at the school. After a few moments of silence, Mion slumped back to us. Petted. Is that good enough? Mion said before collapsing. She's alive at least. Now we can continue the game. Monster. I was amazed the person who made club activities like this could say that. But now, the worst penalty is gone now, right? Right? Rena tried to lighten the mood and was only met with Mion's malicious grin. She was serious now. I'm not holding back anymore. You'll all get yours. The pace of the game became bizarrely quick. I could tell the game had gotten more intense. Ace, three, four, five, I'm out! I'm out as well. <laughs> I'm out too. Three. Oh, that's me. <laughs> I'm out too. Three. I'm out now. Oh, I lost. <laughs> and the heavens chose to vanquish Reyna. Ugh, what kind of penalty, I wonder. I wonder. It wasn't exactly hard for her to be worried. Just thinking about the level of difficulty of Mion's first penalty still made me quiver. And so the penalty she drew with trembling fingers was... The heck was this? Speak like a maid. Well, what is this? This one... Uh, what do I need to do? So basically it means that you have to use the same expressions as a maid? Huh? Okay, master. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I have no idea who wrote that penalty, but she was awesome. Then, Rena, can you shuffle the cards and deal? Uh, yes, master. I could just die right now. Uh, anyway, let's continue, right, Rena? Yes, master. The eagerness to which I was goading Rena into addressing me as master was downright impressive, if I do say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> I won't lose any more. I'm out. I shan't lose either. I'm out. Then with that, I'm out too. Oh, I can't believe it! I lost again! Reyna again? What kind of penalty would it be this time? I was delighted by the mysterious sense of anticipation. Anticipation? No. This was conviction. Remove one piece of clothing from the top and bottom halves of your body. Oh my. That's just indecent. Who could have written this? My face reddened in anger. If I didn't yell something out, I wouldn't be able to hide my shaking. Who did write that? God, please give that man a Nobel Prize. That would be an ignoble prize. Not good, not good. What I was thinking about was written on my face. Oh, me chan Raina begged Mion with teary eyes, but everybody knew Mion's answer already. Nope, nope, nope. Won't go easy on you. You lost. Ticks like a man. Understood, Master. I'll undress. <laughs> I looked around, thinking someone else would probably stop her. Of course, I wasn't exactly trying to stop her either. She just has to remove the bow and then. Oh, maybe not. Then I heard the rustling of clothing. The sound of her skirt hitting the ground sent my heart racing. This is fine, Master. Really, all she has to do is remove her bow and, like, her sock. I looked away like a gentleman. But these club activities, you need to be ruthless after all. Uh. Oh, ha, ha, ha. san whatever were you expecting? Certainly we would not have her strip if she weren't wearing her P.E. clothes underneath. Satoko poked fun at me, but now I can't hear it. Not bad, Kitchen. This old man would have never thought you would go after her like that. You got it wrong. I didn't write that one. Oh, Master didn't write this one? Her squirming around her PE clothes made it impossible for me not to feel anything. <sighs> Just calm down. 
Mion probably wrote that one and planned to go after me as I panicked. Can't fall for her trap, knowing it's a trap. Clear your head. Calm down and assess the situation. I was determined to think my way out of this. The answer was quite simple. I... I win! I then became a god. I, who had already entered the domain of godhood, what would dare stand in my way? It was like they were pulled to me magically. I picked up aces and twos like nobody's business. Uh, how could my luck of the draw be so bad? <laughs> Sotoko lost, right? I'll draw the penalty. Speak like a little sister. Fine, Oni-chan. Yes, the pleasure of making this brat disgrace herself. Uh, this old man loses again. Mion's loss, right? I'll draw it out. Wear a girl's school swimsuit. Uh, that's the one I wanted Kei-chan to get. Yes, Mion's despair was like sweet, sweet honey. Oh, Aster, I lost again. Raina lost. I'll draw it for you. Let the person in first place rest their head on your lap. Huh? In this outfit, Master? <laughs> yeah! She's not wearing a skirt, so it's her bare legs! <sighs> this is not a murder mystery, guys. <laughs> huh! Nichan, too good! Sotoko lost again? I'll draw it. Obey the person in first place. How about I have you give me a shoulder massage? Fine, Nichan. Come on, do it a bit harder. Don't use your nails. <laughs> I had transformed into an evil dictator and couldn't be doing any better. It felt like I could control how the cards played out with my mind and even decided what suit would appear just by willing it. By the time I realized it, I had already assembled a harem. I was laughing haughtily as I rested my head on Reyna, who was now a bloomer-clad maid. Sotoko was wearing a collar and had taken on little sister properties. Mion was fanning me while wearing a school swimsuit. Aw, today is Master's overwhelming victory, isn't it? Please refrain from moving your head around so much. I began to think, why does man have no end to his desires? How could I wish for more than this palace of dreams? What is it, Keiichi? I'm saddened by the thought of a man having no end to his desires. That was it. Brigachan hadn't been in first, but she continued to escape being in last. Keiichi is quite greedy. It's said you should know when enough is enough. I know that very well, but how to say it? I feel like I wouldn't mind if I died now. Ah, master, please refrain from moving your head around. You say you wouldn't mind dying. Then that could be arranged. Rika-chan said it in her usual calm manner with a cheery tone. This was undoubtedly a declaration of war. Go, Rika-chan, go! Take him out! Defeat this archdevil of perversion! <laughs> I might not be able to win, but I'll beat him. Such stoicism from this little girl who had always hidden away in Sotoko's shadow. It would probably be rude not to meet her head on. I shall face you myself, little one. I saw Mion swap a few cards with Rikachan in the middle of the game, but I pretended I didn't see it. Do you believe you can defeat Geichi-sama with just that? It's not even my final form. Two. Ace, 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 eight, 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 reversal. Everybody looked over at me and I was still brimming with confidence. <laughs> the four of them have allied against me, is that it? You're making me laugh. That was good. Reversal, reversal. <laughs> what? How could such a thing be? Satoko let out a shriek. <laughs> you simpletons. Using up all her cards before calling the reversal left Rika-chan with no good cards. She was defeated soon after. I lost. <laughs> Finally, you fall into my clutches. Now I'll pick one out. 
What? Wear cat ears, a bell collar, and a tail. <laughs> Even the penalties were as I wished. Rikachan hung her head and equipped the three holy artifacts. It's questionable as to why such things were in Mion's locker, but since I had no objections, I didn't ask. <laughs> oh, this was so, so. I felt like I'd become Reina. This was definitely cute! <laughs> That wasn't me talking. That was the actual Reina. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> Just Rika Chan mimicked a cat. Teary eyed rings of smoke escape from Rina's ears with an audible. Rika Chan was too cool to kick her home. Just for her bridal. I want to do anything strange. Nothing strange. <laughs> I see. I still have one trick left. Meon gasped and dropped her fist into an open palm. If Raina must, she can take me home. Mew. <laughs> After Raina champions Cage, she said she can. They thought that Raina in cute mode might be able to defeat me. Would it be that easy? Opposing me was the same as opposing God. I'd teach them their place. How preposterous that Raina can't defeat me. For a moment, I didn't know what was going on. The 52 cards danced and flowed freely between Reyna's hands like the machinations of a master magician. Ooh! In the middle of those flowing cards was Reyna's ecstatic expression, her head bobbing around. Shall we, Keiichi-kun? My whole body knew it already. I was going to lose. <laughs> No play, nothing to play, Ki-chan. <laughs> then with this, I'm out. Everyone cheered. I was spent. <sighs> I've got no regrets. God, thank you for letting me dream a little. Now then, I'll take one out. ki sans penalty. This is it. Every peeked at it in unison, gazes flickering between the text and my face. All day today, I did as I pleased. I'll do whatever it is. What's on it? All. Huh? Every penalty up till now. What the heck? Kichisan, should you not be speaking like a little brother? Uh, yes, Onichan. Uh. Aww. This is quite addicting. Next, I'll have you wrap my shoulders. Kechikun, I don't need the lap pillow, so do that other one, okay? Uh, yes, master. Ah, Kechikun is so cute. Say it again, say it again. No, please spare me, master. <laughs> Raina passed out with a squeal, blood spewing from her nose like a fountain. My dignity was being trampled more than a communal doormat. Next is for this old man. I'm gonna have you fan me for a good long while, you know. Whoosh, whoosh. Oh, I almost forgot. You need to wear this, don't you? The school swimsuit? Ah, uh, this is for girls. Can't I wear the one for boys? It was clearly written here, wear a girl's swimsuit. As you can see here. Sohoko was a lone shark. Actually, me trying to escape reality as fast as humanly possible was pretty adorable, if I did say so myself. But, whose school swimsuit am I gonna wear? If I was wearing one of yours, you wouldn't like it, right? Ah, oh, this old man doesn't care about that stuff at all. Think of it as a little benefit. I'm not that in shape, so I think even Kei Chan could fit into it. The executioner surrounded me, wagging their fingers. No! My first thought, it's tied around the waist. My second thought, the chest area is pretty loose. My third thought, the crouch area was ha 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 is bending forward, cute, cute, cute. You'll be ready after you wear the cat ears, bells, and tail. Kei-chan, wanna look in the mirror? It's amazing, really. It's probably the best if you look. The stern scientific calculating nature mixed with her fascination made Mion very scary. Um, 
I would like to respectfully decline, Master. Your ensemble is complete. If only we could send you home dressed like that. <laughs> then this is enough. I'll just change and... While I was saying that, Mion placed her hands on my shoulder and Rika-chan slipped up behind me without a sound. Not yet, Keiichi. There's still the first penalty left. In this getup, Rika-chan patted my head without saying a word. Crash boom pal? <clears throat> Sir, excuse me. Yes, please come in. I stepped forward into the principal's office. My bell collar jingled adorably. The principal froze solid with a smile on his face as he saw me. I couldn't blame him. In this sacred place of study, specifically in his office, though I said excuse me as I entered, the sight of a person entering with a school swimsuit, cat ears, a collar, a tail, and a young male student at that, without a doubt, any normal person's psyche would have stopped cold. But this could be explained. We'll call it the uncanny valley camouflage, if you will. When humans see each other, they can only begin to act after confirming this is human. Meaning that if he could not comprehend what was in front of him, then in those moments before he could begin to fully process the situation, his mind was completely blank. That was my one and only chance for victory. My penalty? Rubbing the principal's head. Principal, I challenge you! Ah! I heard what sounded like a zazing three times. His three-gauge super? The principal said one thing to me. What does it mean to be a man? And in a heartbeat, boof, boof, boof. I don't know, I just, that's just fun to say, boof. <laughs> that tremor resounded through the twilight. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Give me that thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you want more content. I promise. Normally I do more horror-y stuff. <laughs> this is supposed to be a mystery horror. It's supposed to be really fucked up. <laughs> Before I head out, I just wanted to thank Shujin for sending me this beautiful fan art. I know that you said that you thought that it wasn't that great quality and that you were sorry that it was pen only and stuff, but... I am thankful for it regardless. I am, it's super, <laughs> I'm blushing a little. <laughs> I super appreciate it and I will treasure it forever. So thank you, Shujin. I hope you guys like it as much as well. I just wanted to share it with you guys. Alright. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>